Welcome to another episode of Tiffin Box TV. I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Today's guest is most definitely one you should sit up and pay attention to. His name is Ben Hardley. He's in Columbus, Ohio, and he leads a wedding photography business called Style and Story Creative. He's also a business coach and podcaster on his site, Six Figure Photography. Ben, welcome to the show. Hey, Seishu. How's it going, man? It's going wonderfully, wonderfully well. Um, you know, this is exciting times for photographers. And, uh, you know, we have lots more people coming on board as photographers. Mm -hmm. And it's a great time to talk about branding, uh, which I know is at the heart of your webinar that's coming up for Shoot.Edit on April 6th. Uh, it's, a, it's a webinar that you're calling Five Branding Mistakes You Know You're Making. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a little bit, but I wanted to get to know you a little bit more. Uh, you're in Columbus, and you have a, a, a just a, a very successful wedding photography business, and you're also diving into this coaching thing. Talk mm -hmm. to me about your background. How did you how did you evolve? I guess from a wedding photographer into a business coach. Yeah, great question. So uh, a little bit about my backstory. Sure. Uh, I was a fine art major in college, right? And I live in Ohio, the Midwest. And let me tell you, Seju, it's really hard to make a living for your family in Midwest <laughs> selling oil paintings. Uh, and so out of uh, essentially desperation, I knew I wanted to keep making things. I knew I always wanted to make things look good in whatever I did in life. And so this whole kind of photography thing really piqued my interest. And I had reached out to a friend of mine uh, who had his own successful studio. And I just asked him some questions. You know, what, you know, what does he recommend? And his advice to me was just, look, Ben, don't do it. You're just going to bring the industry down. And that was like, it was crushing at first. But then, Seishu, it did this thing in me where it just like instilled this, this drive and this belief that I was like, like, heck no. Like, absolutely not. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to. I'm going to tear this up. I'm going to become his biggest competitor. And on top of it, I'm not just going to create a successful business for myself and my team here, but I'm going to help other photographers create successful businesses uh, for them. And so that is what began my journey and, and really where I'm at today. Awesome. That's fantastic. Uh, you've done such a great job with your branding that, I, I mean, it's clear as day that if you are to talk about branding you're legit. I mean, people go, yeah, look at his websites, look at his, <laughs> look at his, look at his approach to working with clients. Everything seems to fit so nicely. Uh, let's jump, jump right into what your passion is for branding. Why is it so important that you put so much into branding for your own business? Yeah, that's a great question. So Shu, it's one of these things that I, I feel like a lot of photographers um, I don't know if they believe this. I actually had a chance to poll around 300 photographers uh, and I asked them the question, what do they believe is the, um, the most defining uh, thing in terms of, of setting their price point? Like what out of all the things in their business will put a cap on their price point? And, you know, majority of photographers were like image quality, image quality. A lot of them said where I'm located. And yes, those are important things, but I 100% firmly believe that your brand is the number, uh, number two thing that would define uh, how much you can charge. Uh, side note, number one is your self-worth, but, uh, but your brand is so, so important. Seishu, I'm sure you see this, uh, but I mean, if you look around, if you look around this industry, some of, some of the best paid photographers uh, in the photography world quite honestly, they're not the best. <laughs> they're not the most talented. And, and sometimes it's so frustrating, right? We see this and we get so annoyed, but man, they get it. They've got self-worth and they have brand. You cannot undervalue your brand. All right. Uh, I've hammered this home multiple times in previous interviews, but I've got to hear from you again. Uh, <laughs> what is a brand? How do you define brand? Goodness. Uh, let's talk about what brand isn't for a quick second, and then we'll talk about what it is. Because for so many of us, and it, it makes sense why we, we think this way, but for so many of us, when we think of the word brand, uh, the very first thought that comes to mind is your logo, right? Your logo, 
your color palette that you may choose, uh, your font choice, you know, these very like front end visual uh, elements to your brand. Ultimately, uh, your brand is what anyone who encounters you thinks about, right? So if I were to say the word, you know, um, Walmart, <laughs> for better or worse, whatever comes to mind right now is uh, is the brand of Walmart for you, right? Perception is reality. And so we must manage what do people think about when they, when they hear your name, if they see your name uh, in a magazine or on your website, what are, what are the thoughts that come to mind? And one of the things I'm going to talk about in my webinar with Shoot.Edit here is is the importance of niching down as it relates to this. We can we can unpack that a little bit if you want, but sure, Seishi, absolutely. what do you think about that? Well, I think it's, that's fantastic. I, I, I'm i so gl grateful that you've, uh, again, underscored the definition of branding as not being about your logo and or font uh, choice or uh, anything else that's, you know, on, on, a, on a business card, but <laughs> something that how something that that is a perception more than anything else as as how your clients or your or the outside public sees you and your business i think it's it's so on point um what are the five branding mistakes you don't know you're making you get this is something you're going to be talking about on yeah. the webinar don't give away the entire <laughs> webinar obviously but talk a little bit about these five things because i'm curious i i don't know what these five things are so tell us yeah. So these five things, uh, these are things that I see, uh, like, you know, as, as I get emails every day from photographers and then as I'm mentoring photographers uh, on a micro scale in terms of one to one and then and on a much larger scale, I consistently see these five things come about. And uh, and they're so, so important to issue. So the first one that I'm going to unpack is your headshot. Why is your headshot so important? And not only why is it important, um, but why it should be the absolute best picture on your entire website, how we went about creating our own, I actually uh, give out uh, a video that shows how we developed our own headshots, how we shot them, all the nitty gritty, all the stats and the tech specs and the lighting setups, all that kind of stuff. The next thing that I talk about is your copy. Your copywriting, right? When I say copy, all I mean is anytime there's there's verbiage, there's words that you're using, whether it's on your website, uh, your emails, even uh, your your contracts and your review books. How important are those words? Uh, and it's one of those things. Again, we're visual people, and so we tend to just think like, I'm just going to show pictures. Okay, cool. Uh, not words. You need words. Uh, the third thing that we're going to talk about is uh, this is true for about 95% of, of the photographers out there, but you guys, you're creative, I get it, but you're photographers, you're not designers. Stop trying to be graphic designers, okay? Uh, we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Uh, this fourth one is one that I have never heard. I don't hear anybody talking about this, and it is so freaking important, Seishu. It is the way that we handle conflict. The way that you handle conflict with your clients greatly reflects on your brand. Um, and I unpack a, a fantastic uh, way, a, a way to think about this in order to handle conflict. And then lastly, is the importance of niching down. And I hear a lot of photographers talking about the importance of niching down in terms of profit, in terms of sales. You can charge more when you niche down, et cetera, et cetera. But I want to talk about the importance of niching down as it relates to your brand. So those are the five things. Okay. The, uh, the most intriguing of all of them, and I agree with everything you've said, is that last one. What does that mean to niche down? I have, I, not too clear on that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, let me define the term. So when I say niche down, I mean to focus up, right? So for example, uh, you know, you'll go to a, a photographer site and you might see on the menu, they'll be like, uh, here's my wedding work. Here's my portrait work. Here's my children's work. Here's my newborn work. Here's my, my, uh, my concert photography work, my personal work. And you see all of these items, all these different categories. And what I'm trying to convey is that when you focus up, when you niche down and you say, look, I am solely a wedding photographer. I am solely a newborn photographer. Um, not just a children's photographer, but like a newborn photographer from the ages of like one to three months, right? Or, or two weeks to three months or whatever it is. When you do this, yes, there are other benefits in terms of profit and what you can charge because now you're a specialist. But I would argue that one of the, the greatest benefits is brand. Because remember, Seishu, brand is what comes to mind when a client thinks about 
about your name, when they hear your name, what comes to mind? And it gets very challenging to create any sense of direction or focus for your brand. If when a client thinks about your brand and you're trying to become a, like, uh, you're trying to book a wedding photography gig, you know, and when they think about your brand, all they can think about is that little kid smashing a cake in its face on your website. You know what I mean? It's really hard to get someone to think about wedding photography and not just wedding photography, but like spending, you know, 10 grand on your wedding photography. Uh, th this type of direction uh, is what I'm talking about. Awesome. So essentially it is about being hyper focused on what you offer so that your clients can remember that, that exactly what you're known for. Right? Exactly. Like okay. in Columbus, Ohio, yeah. I, I, I would put money on it when people, when people ask the question, who's the best wedding photographer in Columbus, Ohio? I bet nine times out of 10, Stone Story Creative comes up. Stone Story Creative. Because we're so focused, people know this is all that we do. There's no mistake about it. You couldn't, you couldn't, uh, 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 what am I trying to say here? Like there, there's absolutely no way that you could tie us to anything else but wedding photography and not just wedding photography, but the best of the best wedding photography, high end wedding photography, the type of wedding photography that makes you go like, oh my gosh, this is crazy expensive. Yes, but I have to have it. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Well, you're going to learn these five things and more uh, when you sign up for the webinar that's on April 6th at mm -hmm. 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And it's thanks to shoot.edit. Really, uh, they are producing these phenomenal webinars with amazing, amazing people uh, in this business. Uh, and it's an honor to talk to every single one of them or as many of them as possible about what they're planning to do at these webinars. Um, one, one last question, and this is probably the biggest one uh, yet, uh, Ben. Is, is, oh, boy. <laughs> is, I know, right? The suspense. Uh -huh. uh, one of the things you say on your website, and I've, I have, when I saw it, I said, oh, my God, I have to ask him about this. And mm. this is the quote I'm pulling from your site. And you say this. You say, this is just speculation, but I think within the next 10 years, the photography industry for the middle to low end photographer is going to collapse. Mm -hmm. Th this is, uh, uh, I, I have to be honest with you, this is not the first time I've, I've seen something like this or read something like this. I want to know from you, though, why do you say that and what indications are there right now in the industry we're in right now where you see evidence of this collapse? Sure. It's a great question. So um, I guess let's talk about it in terms maybe even of, uh, uh, we'll tie an analogy here to like, uh, you know, like the housing crisis, right? So like when the housing crisis happened, right? And everything collapsed, it collapsed for the, the middle to low end. Uh, but there will always be this reality that the rich are rich, okay? The people who have money will have money, largely, all right? And they're, they're willing to pay for a service or a product, okay? They, they will always be willing to pay for a specialist uh, that, will, that will do the job better than anybody else, okay? But again, for the middle to low end, um, when, things get, when things get rough uh, or when the market changes, um, they're going to come up with other ways to go about it. So now in the photography industry, what's happening is, and we see this, right? This is a crazy awesome time to be a photographer because the barrier to entry is so low. But... The negative is the barrier to entry is so low. And now we're seeing it. I mean, our dude, one of my favorite phone, our cameras that I own is my phone. It just hands down is my absolute favorite camera. And it's going to just keep changing and keep evolving. It's, it's getting ridiculous. There are now SLRs in phones. Mind is being like, it's just insane. All right. Um, my buddy here, he just got one of those new like Fuji X Pro 2 or whatever's. And this thing, it's, it's like this big and it takes better pictures than my 5D3. It's insane. All that I'm trying to get at is that for, for the, you know, like for the middle to low end, a bride just simply isn't going to pay 1500 bucks to go have someone show up and, and take these pictures because they're going to have a lined up list of guests who are all shooting the, all of this stuff for them 
on their behalf and they're shooting it from every single angle, they're going to get 10,000 pictures, not just your three to 400 or whatever it is. Um, and they're just not going to pay. They're not going to pay 1500. They're not going to pay, you know, 2,500. But what's going to happen is the people who are at the top, the top end, they're not going anywhere. They have a clientele that, that will still value it. That's going to pay the money for an expert to come and be the specialized wedding photographer on the day. I mean, you see this a lot, even with senior pictures, I think even, even worse than wedding photography, senior photographers, all of their friends are photographers now, you guys. There's so many kids in high school that are like photographers. And I can't even do air quotes because they just are. Mm -hmm. They are photographers and they're all shooting each other's pictures. All right. Uh, that's what I mean. And so it's so important that we have, we have a business that isn't just like getting by, that we're not just like, you know, making the bare bones, but we actually are having a business uh, of abundance. Um, what, when you, when you give those examples of technology coming in, uh, and helping those, uh, who are just starting in the business and making it easy for people. And, and I see it uh, at weddings as well. You know, just about everybody has a, an iPhone 6S and, uh, are, you know, are, are, are making photographs. I mean, are making photographs for themselves, maybe for the bride and groom. Um, I, but I think the, the challenge may be, uh, if that's the case, mm -hmm. uh, you are then left with really one or two options. One is set yourself up at a higher rate, number one, but you can only ask for more money if you have a business that's really geared towards the high end in the first place, right? So in the sense, your customer service needs to be at a high end, your mm -hmm. products need to be at a high end, mm -hmm. uh, your Brand. Entire presence, <laughs> yeah, or your brand, your brand. <laughs> your brand needs to be at a high end, absolutely. Yeah. So it, it comes sort of full circle about the brand again, where you're setting those expectations that your clients are going to be getting the best of the best for their money, mm -hmm. and yes. that's why uh, a wedding is ten thousand and it's not four thousand or three thousand, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Great. Well, that was a simple answer, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> yeah. um, so this is this is the kind of stuff that uh, that excites me, you know, uh, about the business is that there's lots and lots of discussion about what's happening, and folks like Ben, uh, thanks for coming on the show and talking about branding, which I think is a huge factor in whatever you planning on doing. Whether you, if you're starting out or you're already in the, you've been doing this for a while, you have to perhaps address your brand now uh, more than ever. Uh, you know, we just read this quote from Ben's website. It's like, uh, the, you know, the, what is it called? The, the uh, there's a what is it? The, there's an expression, something in the mind. Um, uh, canary in the mind. Could canary be. in the mind. <laughs> yeah, it could be the canary in the mind for you guys uh, in a way because, uh, well, you know, there's evidence. There is uh, here's a solution really to work on your business and really elevate it. To a point where you're not only just sustaining yourself, but you're just kicking ass. So, uh, thanks. Hey, so can I can I add one quick thought to this? Please, yes, just go ahead. One last thought, and this is a thought that I I hear a lot because as photographers, we are we're artists, right? Mm -hmm. And we're we're people who want to give our clients. Um, the feels, you know, we yes. want to do this for more than just money. Absolutely. And so sometimes when I say these things, there's this feeling of like, whoa, 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 I'm not just in this to make money, right? I'm just not in this to be a six figure photographer, whatever it may be. And what I want to say is what I, what I, what I want to challenge that kind of train of thought to is that this is a business and you, in order to, to keep giving your clients the feels. In order to keep creating artwork, you have to have a business uh, that does thrive. And so I, I just want to encourage people that six-figure photography, it's, it's less about accumulating wealth and it's more about discovering self-worth and providing value for everyone you encounter. Like I want you guys to have abundance, not just in your profits, but in your relationships and your creativity. These are things that uh, are, are why we have a business in the first place. So I just had to add that in there, Seiju. Thanks for giving me that little uh, Absolutely, moment. no problem. 
uh guys one more time the webinar is on april 6th uh it's with shoot.edit i'll have a link uh obviously for folks f to register uh it's called five branding mistakes you don't know you're making and we've gone over the five mistakes uh ben's gonna uh unwrap that and, and just go deep into that uh, for about an hour or so and it's gonna be phenomenal i can tell right off the bat uh one last thing we're gonna talk about uh, no, let's just wrap that up right here uh, because it, I could keep going on and on because you've got so many things going, my friend, yeah. where you've got you've written a book. Uh, you've, you've got a series of web videos uh, talking to people about how to book more clients. I mean, it's phenomenal what the kind of stuff that you're you're bringing out, uh, helping other photographers be better photographers and business men and women. Um, so we'll leave it at that. I'll have links to everything. Thanks for joining me today. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye. Mm -hmm.